Hey everyone, Chief Meteorologist Brad Pettibus here with your update on Hurricane Ian, which is now again a hurricane, but it's kind of a weird looking hurricane. It's kind of a hybrid uh, system and it's gonna have a pretty significant impact on the Carolinas. There's a look at it. Uh, you're probably saying to yourself at home, or watching this on your phone, what is going on, on the south side? There's no thunderstorms here. In fact, it's wide open. The center is right there. All the weather is on the northwest side, and that is kind of key to why the weather is going to be so rough around here, because as this moves north, this big shield of rain is going to be moving in this direction, and that's going to spread rain and wind into the Carolinas. Let me give you the 8 p.m. advisory, which came in uh, not too long ago. You can see the uh, winds are 75 miles an hour, moving north-northeast at 10. Let me show you the track, because the track is key. I like showing this version of the track, because it shows the impacts of the winds. Remember the uh, a forecast cone, which you see all the time, um, is where the center could be. The center could be anywhere from there to there. But the uh, impacts, the surge, the wind, the rain, actually takes up a huge area. And depending on where it is in that cone, you could see impacts well east and west of the center. That's why you should never focus on where the cone is. You should focus on where the impacts are. But you can see the movement off to the northwest. Big storm surge for the uh, South Carolina coast and then up into the Western Carolinas, but it's going to be weakening quickly and moving very fast. One thing we'll have to watch tonight is it gets close to the Gulf Stream down here. If it does touch that edge to that warmer water and it continues to shift east, which I've seen a trend of this kind of wobbling this way, we might see more of an impact in the Grand Strand, the Cape Fear region. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're in that area. And speaking of the coast, I do want to make sure you emphasize that we have some huge storm surge potential, especially in the Charleston area. But if it starts to drift to the north and east a little more, we could see surge go up in areas like Oak Island, um, Ocean Isle, Topsail, um, Holden Beach, all those areas north of Myrtle Beach as well. So that's an area we have to watch. If you're living in those areas watching this, please make sure you heed all warnings. And if you can, get away from the water just to be safe. Quick look at the uh, tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings that are up currently for the area. We've got quite a few for the uh, for the coast. You can see all the tropical storm warnings. These are hurricane warnings down there. Um, and those do include uh, inland areas where we're expecting 20 to 30 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 50. We do still have a flash flood watch, which encompasses the big area. But I do think the flood risk might be mitigated a little bit if it continues to shift east. Now, as far as those winds are concerned, uh, the probability of seeing tropical storm force winds obviously highest along the coast up into areas of the Fayetteville area. But you can see for the Piedmont, pretty significant risk, especially in the Sand Hills. That's the area where we expect to see the winds kind of fall apart there. As far as the heavy rain risk, Let's look at that. We'll show you that the risk on the coast tonight, but tomorrow you could see that big area in red, a pretty tight gradient. What I mean is we could go from a um, little bit of rain back here to a whole bunch of rain over here, which is something that we'll have to watch tomorrow. So it may not be as bad in some areas west and it might be a lot worse areas east. So this is the graphic everyone wants to see. Let's go hour by hour, show you exactly how this unfolds. So Northeast winds tonight, tomorrow morning when you wake up, we are likely going to see some, whoops, what's going on here? Let's see if this is loading. Let's see if we can get this to load. There we go. Oh, I think it is actually loading a new set of images here. So we'll see, man, I guess it was going to load. We'll try that again. We'll see if we can get it to load. Um, while that's trying to load up here, let me show you the rainfall forecast because this will be the key part, you know, areas that see the heaviest rain. You see the rain moving in from the southeast and that rain beginning to pile up. I don't think we're having some kind of issue with data coming in, but oh, there we go, kind of populates there, really slow to populate, but you get an idea there, that rain comes in from the southeast and really could pile up. And those areas east, obviously much heavier amounts in here, much lesser amounts, and it's all dependent on the track. If the track goes like this, um, this will hold in, but if this track shifts this way a little bit, it would pull the drier air back towards the east. So let's go back and see if this uh, data is loading, because it's kind of squirrely tonight. We'll let it sit there for a second and load. There we go. Ah, like one frame is trying to load. It doesn't like loading for some reason. So uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so I think we got this working now. Let's see, we got this working. There we go. You can see this moving in from the south and east. So by tomorrow morning when you wake up, uh, right after sunrise, the first bands of rain move in, but it really goes downhill into the afternoon. I mean, by noon, we've got heavy rain rolling in. Look at those winds. Again, these are the gusts, by the way. Um, so these are the gusts we expect at this time. Northeast winds could gust to 45, 50 miles an hour, and it'll be sustained about maybe 20 to 25, maybe 30. Um, so 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., those bands are the worst. 
um, by 6, 7 p.m. It's So the evening rush, you get the idea. This is why schools are closed tomorrow or going virtual. It's just the afternoon buses and ride home would have been really treacherous, just be on the roads, period. Um, and probably some trees and power lines coming down. So make sure you're charging everything up. But the system moves to the north pretty quickly, which is good news for Saturday because if uh, by Saturday morning, the dry air tries to work in on the back side of this. Whoops. The back side, we start to see that dry air filter into the region. And if that moves in, that will really set the stage for some pretty nice weather um, for, for Saturday. I mean, not that it, it's going to be mostly sunny, but you get the idea here. By the afternoon, we might see some breaks in the clouds, might be just drizzly, misty. And so all in all, for Charlotte FC and Saturday activities, not all that bad. And then going into Sunday, I think conditions will improve even more as we might see the sunshine come out. Um, before we see maybe another batch of rain develop late in the day. So I still think we'll see some rain on Sunday, but Saturday is definitely looking better. So let's go back and I'll loop this one more time, let you kind of view the whole thing. Let's play this through. You could see the rands moving through, batches of rain coming through by three o'clock, four o'clock, five, six, seven, eight o'clock in the afternoon. By Saturday morning, improving conditions in the weekend, not a total washout though it won't be perfect. Friday's the worst weather. So let's break down the timing. I want to make sure you know um, exactly what we're talking about here. I'll put up this graphic because I think this tells the story here. Um, I'm going to remove my head just for a second and we'll continue to talk. But you can see um, basically starting in the morning, getting worse in the afternoon, worse weather, Friday afternoon, evening into early Saturday and improving for the rest of the weekend. Stay weather aware, charge up all those phones, be ready for possible power outages and stay tuned for more updates. My next vlog will be early tomorrow morning, um, hopefully, probably pre nine o'clock, but uh, no guarantee I'll let you know um, when I post it tomorrow morning.